Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and other Democrats just proposed to raise our Social Security taxes to pay retirees an additional $2,400 a year or $200 a month. And Republicans, on the other hand, like Mitt Romney and Lindsey Graham, are taking a different step by proposing to raise the minimum Social Security age to save the program. And I made a video about four months ago on how fragile the Social Security program is under the current funding process. And you're probably wondering, why you should care about social security when you're still 20 or 30 years away from turning age 62. You should care because we're the ones funding our retirees. And for every dollar we pay into the social security payroll tax, 85 cents of that goes to the trust fund that pays their current retirees and their families. And the other 15 cents goes to a separate social security trust fund that pays benefits to people with disabilities. And Congress right now is trying to rush to pass a bill like they always do before the midterm elections because most American voters are ages 50 and older and many of them collect social security benefits. If social security runs out of money, I can almost guarantee you that most of them will be voted out of office. And if you're brand new to my channel, my name is Sai and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to go over how raising social security uh, taxes would affect your income and what Congress might do to fix the social security program. What does it mean for the people on the fire journey? Well, we could be paying a lot more in payroll taxes to keep the program alive. What does it mean when we retire early? Not much because we don't have an earned income and we won't have to pay any into the payroll taxes. However, if more people decide to retire early, then the social security program could become a crisis because then there will be fewer workers contributing money to the retirees. Also, don't forget to check out my Grammarly affiliate link in the description below. For 2022, Social Security and military retirees received their cost of living adjustment or what's called COLA at 5.9% based on the CPI data or consumer price index from the third quarter of 2021. And what the government didn't expect to happen was how inflation was no longer transitory and going to reach above 8% year over year and gas prices at five, six, or even $7 a gallon in some cities. So retirees with a 5.9% COLA are still struggling to pay for groceries, gas, or other transportation. And according to the Social Security Administration, 25% of American retirees rely solely on their Social Security checks, and those checks are responsible for at least 90% of their income. Congress needs to make COLA changes based on the CPI data for seniors, or CPIE and E is for elders, and it has a more accurate reflection on senior spending patterns, and they spend a lot more on healthcare than us youngins, right? And according to the 2022 OSDI Trustees Report, which stands for the 2022 Annual Report of the Board of Trustees of the Federal Old Age and survivors insurance and federal disability insurance trust funds. Wow, that was a mouthful. The social security program has enough funding to send out checks to retirees and Americans with disabilities for 13 years. If Congress doesn't take action now, by 2035, the, there will be a 20% reduction in benefits to keep the program sustainable. So if you're receiving $2,000 a month from social security, you will only get $1,600 a month. And that's really bad for the retirees, especially if they're only relying on the social security checks to pay for their expenses, right? Also, the OSTI report is predicting the number of Americans 65 and older will increase from 57 million in 2021 to about 76 million by 2035. That's 19 million more people who will receive social security checks. And the government has to keep the worker to retiree ratio healthy because again, workers fund the retirees. So in 2021, the worker to retiree ratio was 2.7. And by 2035, the ratio will be reduced to 2.3. Basically, we'll have more retirees than workers in 13 years. And the program will only have enough money to fund them at 80%. There's not much that government can do when, uh, with the worker to retiree ratio when millennials and the future generations are having fewer kids. We're sitting at about 12 births per 
1,000 people and that's probably going to continue to decrease over the next 10 years. By the way, you can get our free fire resources by visiting firesidechat.com slash contact. You can also check out my Fireside Chat shop and I have all of my stuff on my bookshelf at firesidechat.com slash shopping. The Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen said in a statement on the Social Security report that it'll be vital for Congress to take steps to put Social Security and Medicare on a solid financial footing for the long term. So what happens if Bernie Sanders Social Security Expansion Act gets signed into law. His solution is to raise payroll taxes on people making $250,000 a year or more. And the law right now is capped at $147,000 a year in the year 2022, but that income cap is already increased every year based on inflation. So what's interesting is that there will be a gap between $147,000 and $250,000. Let's say you make $250,000 a year and you're not self-employed and you pay 6.2% of your gross income into social security and 1.45% into Medicare, but let's not worry about Medicare right now. So you basically contribute almost $600 every paycheck until you hit the cap at $9,114, which is the 6.2% of $142,000 or $147,000 for the year 2022. After that, you get bigger paychecks because you save 6.2% for the rest of the year. And if you make $300,000 a year, and let's say you're not self-employed, then you're still going to contribute normally up to $9,114. And if Congress passes what Bernie Sanders is proposing, then you start paying into Social Security again when you hit $250,000 in income. And let's say starting in October per this calendar, and you will have to contribute an additional $3,500 into the social security tax for the year. So it's not 6.2% for the entire $250,000 in income, but there's gonna be a gap between the current income limit and $250,000. And according to Congressman DeFazio, who's co-sponsoring the bill with Bernie Sanders, increasing the social security contribution for those making $250,000 or more will fund social security until the year 2096. So I would be 110 years old by then. Bernie Sanders also put out a statement that he wants the wealthy Americans to pay their fair share and keep the social security program strong for current and future beneficiaries. I'm not sure everyone making $250,000 a year is considered wealthy since 36% of them are still living paycheck to paycheck. I think I've said this in several videos, but your income does not equate to your wealth. Now I personally know millionaires who made less than six figures in income their whole life. And I'm all, always gonna be politically neutral here on this channel and I just wanted to point that out. But I also get that uh, raising social security taxes or any taxes for every American is going to create a political problem for the Democrats who have been advocating to raise taxes on the wealthy Americans. And Senator Joe Manchin, who's played more of a centrist between Democrats and the Republicans supports uh, supports raising the income threshold to keep Social Security alive, but only up to $400,000 a year in income. And Mitt Romney from the Republican side is calling to, a, to restructure Social Security and Medicare benefits to reduce the national debt. Lindsey Graham, on the other hand, from the same party, is suggesting raising the minimum retirement age. And right now, the minimum age to collect Social Security is 62. It could possibly mean that the future retirees might have to wait a few extra years to become eligible to collect the retirement benefits. Mitt Romney also stated that Bernie Sanders' bill, and I quote, has no chance whatsoever of receiving a single Republican vote in either house. And something else I want to show you in this journal from Congressional Research Service dated back in December 2021 about raising or eliminating the taxable earnings base for Social Security. If the taxable earnings base were eliminated, then about 8% of taxpayers are projected to pay more payroll taxes. And I'll link this document in the description below. So basically, just by eliminating the income cap on Social Security, the OSD trust funds will get a boost to funding the retirees way past 2034, right? Another appro approach is to raise the payroll tax rate from 12.4% to 13.36% to achieve solvency over the next 75 years. So the bottom line is that getting rid of the income cap would eliminate the social security shortfall. The other option is to raise the payroll tax rate from 12.4%, which would ensure the system is solvent for the next 75 years. 
Is this going to benefit the wealthy Americans making $250,000 a year or more? According to this journal, it's going to increase their benefits. A worker who paid taxes on earnings of $400,000 each year would get a benefit of $6,000 a month or $72,000 a year. And the income replacement rate is at 18%, whereas someone with lifetime earnings of $1 million a year will get a monthly social security benefit of approximately $13,500 a month or $162,000 a year a replacement rate of 16.2%. Our goal is to have a 100%, 150%, or 200% income replacement rate. Okay, maybe 200% is too aggressive, but you get the idea. Just relying on social security won't be enough to fund our retirement lifestyle. This is why we're investing half of our income now. So by the time we get our social security, we'll just invest that social security checks right into the stock market. And I just don't know if Congress would go for increasing the payroll tax rate when inflation is so high right now. But if they don't do something now, then retirees will face benefit cuts starting in 2035. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the future of the social security program. And if you want to know more about how to invest for your future, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.